you know, this um, this caps what was a really rough year, not just for Chevron, but for all the oil companies because of the huge decline in demand for oil with the, the shutdowns uh, around the globe, uh, with people not flying, people not traveling. Um, but where do you think things stand right now? Well, I think we've emerged from 2020 even better. Uh, the fourth quarter was a steady quarter, and we began to see things turn. Uh, we uh, finished our uh, integration of Noble Energy and structurally reduced both uh, capital and operating costs. And we've seen uh, the global economy begin to turn even as we still face the pandemic. Uh, we are, uh, we're built for profitable growth in, into the recovery. Uh, we've uh, executed bottom of cycle uh, M&A when others couldn't. Uh, we've restructured our business. We've still got the strongest balance sheet in the industry. And uh, there are nobody, there's nobody asking questions about our dividend, either now or into the future. So in our business, capital discipline and cost discipline always matter. And of course, we're prepared for a lower carbon energy system in the future. We're investing to reduce uh, the carbon emissions and intensity of our own business. We're investing in renewable products to help our customers do the same and in technologies that hold the promise to scale and, uh, and contribute in a bigger way in the future. So uh, we're coming through a very difficult period of time and, uh, and markets are still healing and, and there are still challenges out there, but uh, I'm very optimistic uh, about the future for Chevron. You took some pretty significant actions this year to try and maintain that dividend and keep things safe there. Um, you laid off about 15 percent of the workforce and, and CapEx spending declined. I think you're saying now you're, you're expecting to spend 14 to 15 billion dollars a year between now and, and 2025 versus the 22 billion that, that you had looked at earlier before all of this crisis sort of hit. Um, is, is that enough? You think you're at the point now where you can kind of see the future, you can see where oil prices are going to be. And, and say with certainty that, that that was enough to get you through from here out? Actually, before the pandemic, we were preparing for uh, w what's generally described as a lower for longer uh, energy market uh, from a pricing standpoint. And so the, the restructuring of our organization and some of the downsizing uh, was actually something that was underway before the pandemic and part of our long-term view of uh, what it would take to compete in energy markets. And our portfolio uh, has some really unique attributes, I think, versus many others in our industry. We have a number of long-lived uh, legacy assets that will produce for many decades to come with relatively modest ongoing capital investment to maintain them. And then we have a, a very significant and attractive uh, portfolio of short cycle uh, development activity in places like the Permian Basin in Argentina, now in Colorado and in Canada that gives us great flexibility in our capital spending. And so we were able to bring capital spending down when markets weren't calling for energy in the near term. Markets were very well supplied. And we have the capability to bring that back up when uh, the fundamentals of the market start to uh, tighten and indicate that uh, that investment is needed to keep markets well supplied. So uh, our, our cost structure, our capital flexibility, and our portfolio all are prepared for the future, and we believe that uh, we can compete in any environment and be very successful in any environment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.